This lesson deals with inductance and its properties. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 5, starting on page 8. Our last circuit element is called inductance. The symbol for it is a squiggly line. I apply a voltage across it and a current through it such that it absorbs power. If I do that, then the relationship between voltage and current is the following. That the voltage is equal to the derivative of the current with respect to time times a scalar. We're going to call that scalar inductance. We could graph this if we put voltage on the x-axis, but now the derivative of current on the y-axis, we get a straight line that passes through the origin. And the slope would be 1 over L. Let's put L on the other side of the equation. What would be the units of inductance? Well, I have to have volts here, so this would have to have volts. And then we're multiplying it by amps per second. We take the reciprocal of that as seconds per amp. This had units of volts, seconds per amp. When you multiply these together, you're going to get volts out. Again, that's a mouthful, and so it actually is named after Joseph Henry, and referred to as a unit of Henry or Henry's, or just the letter H. Now, like the capacitance, we can make some observations based on the derivative. If you had a constant current flowing through the inductance, its derivative would be equal to zero. And that would imply that then the voltage is the inductance times zero. But that's our definition of a short circuit. No voltage and a current flowing through it. The second observation would be this derivative. If we were to allow the current to change rapidly or instantaneously, that would imply that the slope is equal to infinity. To get the current to jump quickly or instantaneously, the voltage has to approach infinity. But it's not possible to create an infinite voltage. So we can say that the current through an inductance cannot change instantaneously. We're going to use this as a boundary condition in solving a differential equation later in the chapter. Our definition for the inductance is that V is equal to L di dt. Let's solve for I in terms of V. Let's integrate both sides of the equation dt and evaluate it from some time t0 to t1. Can pull the L out because it's not a function of time and the dt's cancel. The integral of 1 d i of t. That's going to be i of t at the upper limit minus i of t at the lower limit. Solve for i at some time t1. Let's divide by L. So we got this term divided by L plus this term on the other side of the equation. This is the value of the current in the inductor at the start of our problem at t0. So we call that the initial condition. And then the current at some time in the future is the integral of the voltage from that instant of time to t1 divided by L, where it's basically adding to this initial condition. A lot of people want to have just t here, so let's just put a t there and place this by a t, but then shouldn't have t here. That would mean something quite different. Let me use a dummy variable x. Current through an inductance is 1 over L integral from t0 to t of v of x dx plus i at time t0. Let's next take a look at power and energy. Power is the derivative of energy with respect to time. Let's solve for the energy absorbed by an inductance. Integrate both sides of the equation dt. Evaluate that from t0 to t1. And then I've got these canceling. I get the integral of 1 dw of t. That's going to be the energy at time t1 minus the energy at time t0. So to solve for this, then, I'll put this on the other side of the equation, the integral of power, dt, plus an initial condition. What is power? Well, it's voltage times current, as we've defined it. This initial condition is the energy absorbed by the inductance at t equals t0. Let's do a change of variable, replacing t1 by t. t1, and here's t now. Replacing t by x here as a dummy variable. Expression for the power absorbed by an inductance. What is the voltage? The voltage is equal to L di dt, but we're using x as a dummy variable, so it'd be di of x dx times i of x dx, and the dx is cancel. I get the integral then of i of x di of x, and pull out the L in front because it's not a function of current. And now I've got the integral of x dx. That's going to be 1 half x squared, where x is i of x, evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit, plus our energy absorbed at time t equals t0. Upper limit is going to be 1 half times L times I squared of T, and then we're going to subtract the lower limit, so it's going to be 1 half L times I of T0 squared plus W at T0. What is this term here? Well, it's the energy absorbed at T equals T0, but that's what this is. They subtract and they cancel. Well, the energy absorbed by an inductance is 1 half L times I squared. This is always a positive number. What about power, though? Power is the derivative of energy with respect to time, so taking the derivative of this, L and half are not a function of time, so it's 1 half L, and then the derivative of I squared of T dt. This can only be positive, but we can't have a function 
that has a slope that's positive and negative when it's squared. And a good example is a sine wave. Power absorbed by an inductance can be positive or negative. The ability to generate power, which is again negative absorption, implies that the inductance must store energy. Now since the energy absorbed is always positive, again it's one half Li squared, then the inductance must store energy when it's absorbing power, and it must return this energy when it's generating power. So we can again use this as a storage element. Can't take more out than we put in, but it is a way to store energy temporarily. Like a capacitance, an inductance simply stores this absorbed energy and eventually returns it. If no energy is dissipated, then the device remains cooled at a touch, as compared to a resistance, which would turn its absorbed energy into heat. When an inductance is absorbing power, the voltage is as shown. Current enters the plus terminal, comes out the minus terminal. When an inductance is generating power, because the current cannot change instantaneously, the polarity of the voltage flips, and now the current comes out of the plus terminal. For a capacitance, the current flips direction. For an inductance, the voltage flips direction. This can be very useful for building what are called switch mode power supplies. But like a capacitance, you can't take out more energy than you've stored. And this is inductance and some of its properties. 